All right, Jacob, Jake Epstein here. Got you loaded in, and swing looks pretty good. I scrolled through here a little bit before I got started, and uh, my concern with you is more of an upper body issue. The footwork, knee action looks pretty darn good, but let's go ahead and go through. The big thing is you pushing your hands away. So a lot of people teach that, you know, go ahead and load and push your hands back. Some people say walk away from your hands as you step forward. So let's go ahead and watch your step here. It looks like you start with an open stance. I'm going to draw, try to draw a parallel line to your back toe here. And let's see where your front foot comes back to. Okay, so it almost comes back. That's actually not too bad. Make sure we don't bail out on these and we are stepping a little bit towards the plate, especially when you have an open stance. Okay, now as far as this is all style. So from the time you pick your foot up, if you hit your hand, you hit your hands kind of down and back and then you bring them there, back up. And then about toe touch position here, we have to look a little bit more like this is A-Rod's first home run. This is just a great swing. Regardless of who it is, if you're a fan or not. Okay, so here's his toe touch position. Notice the bend in his front arm. Notice how the elbow is behind his hands. Okay, that position with your back elbow will keep your front arm from barring out. Okay, so this is, again, this is um, my concern with your swing. This is what I want to attack with the drills that we're going to set up here. Okay, so very common. This is probably the, you know, the biggest issue with players that I, I see moving forward. This is something called bat drag. The great part here, most people that have bat drag don't have their front shoulder in. Notice how your front shoulder is down in that position. So let's see if my... Oh, we can't really get one here with the front shoulder, but it's negative 8 degrees is what that's telling us. Okay, so your front shoulder is down negative 8 degrees in this position. If we look at A-Rod, he's at about negative 11 degrees. Okay, so both of those are very good. Obviously, the more you can keep your shoulder down, the more torque you're going to have. And torque is, where is your, you know, if we draw a perpendicular line from your shoulder angle, that's where your upper body's facing. And then if we draw a perpendicular line through your hips, where's your lower body facing? So this angle in here, okay, from here to here, at 18 degrees, it's... That's okay, but that's kind of small. If we do it with A-Rod, I'll see if I can... Here's where his chest is facing and his hips are... Well, I'm going to have to draw something else here. Let's see. His hips are facing that way. So if I now put the protractor on that guy, it'll give us a reading here. So you can see he's at 33 degrees. Big leaguers that hit for decent power are usually 30 to 38 degrees. Okay, How would we do that? Simply, if you keep your back shoulder up a little bit longer here, your front shoulder will stay down even more. Okay, So again, one of the things you're going to hear me talk about in the videos that I prescribe for you is going to be that back elbow. Keeping that back elbow behind the knob of the bat. This is a huge... Sorry about that random line there. Um, that's a huge power loss when your arm gets that far away from you. Okay, you can see how far, you know, distance-wise your top hand is from your neck, and you can see how much closer his is. It's probably half the distance or so. So that's going to take time to get through the zone. Okay, so let's go through. Um, again, this is one of the next positions I like to look at is when your chest starts to face your front foot. Okay, we, we missed kind of a frame, but that's pretty close there. Chest at your front foot. I'm going to bring A-Rod to a similar position here as he comes through. Notice the knobs stay in front of his back elbow the entire time. Very, very, very important. Okay, so these are the positions I'm going to get you in in the drill. So again, chest kind of facing up there. Notice how his hands are even with his armpit or in front of his armpit is even better. Notice where your hands are. So perfect world, your hands are going to fit right in here, in this box here, when your chest faces your front foot. Okay, that's going to be like our big goal here over the next couple weeks. Then as you come through to hit, again, you can see that knob. Still, if I draw a vertical line from the knob of the bat, that elbow's still in front. 
you know, a rod here, that knob's going to be in front of that elbow the whole time as he comes forward. See this elbow separation here? The bigger the separation in this position, so if we go back one more, whoops, too far, right about there. If I put, let's see if we can, a little protractor didn't like to work for us, did it? Okay, this one does. So 53 degrees, if we look at a rod in that same position. Typically, your forearm angle needs to be, you know, above 100 for sure. A lot of the big leaguers are around 120. So the bigger that separation in, in this position, that your forearms do have to get close together, but not this early in the swing. We got to use kind of our shoulders and our legs prior to that position. Um, we'll be shorter to the ball. So we want to try to keep those elbows apart. Okay, and you can see how still his head is. There's his approach position when the knob gets kind of parallel to the camera here. That's yours there. So you can see you really got to work hard. This is great though. Watch how you pull the knob forward right there to get it out in front of your body. Okay. Perfect world. Probably be a little, whoops, a little bit further out in front. Kind of like here to here. Knob would be the end of the arrow. And then there'd be more space. See how your left bicep is smashed to your chest there. Okay. We're going to try to get some air under there. Notice a rod there. All right, let's go through. And then when you get to contact, pretty pretty great. Um, palm is up. Swing plane looks fantastic. There's the plane of the pitch. Your barrel stays on that line. Um, if I look here at your knees, watch your front knee push back, your back knee come in. Perfect. Sorry I'm only spending time on the parts I want to fix, but this is unbelievable, your lower body move here. This is creates power. Okay, lower body creates power and force. Upper body creates consistency. Your swing plane's good, so you're going to be pretty consistent. But having that long approach back here, this is going to create a longer arc. Your, your barrel's going to be slow. You want to be short back here and then long out in front. You're kind of long to long, setting up a long radius, so we want to go ahead and fix that. That is all that I see. Um, let's continue here with A-Rod, just so you can kind of finish... Finish the swing. Notice how he hits this ball out in front, and he hits it kind of towards center field, which is great. Um, let me bring you. Let's see. You. I thought you hit this out in front. Yeah. So if you look at your right arm angle, whoops. Right arm angle looks great. Even if I go one more frame, boom. Then you push through. Front knee looks great. Extension looks pretty good. You could probably get this right arm a little bit straighter there in your power V position. Um, I would love for you to fix that approach. Okay, that's going to be not approach, but our, our initial rotation there. Keeping the elbows apart, keeping the knob in front of the back elbow. Okay, these are the moves we're going to work on right in there. That's the only part of the swing. So from here to about this position here, that's what we need to fix. Everything else looks great. The problem is that's like the first move of the swing, so we don't want to get behind the eight ball too early.